Hello, and welcome back in to another episode of the Integrative Health Simplified Podcast. I'm Carrie Cootie, your host, and we are talking about an interesting topic today. We are still in season one and in a series called Common Health Misconceptions. And in this episode, we are specifically going to be talking about women and women's cycles and how I think everyone just has this common misconception that like there's going to be that time of month and it's just going to be terrible and that's kind of just normal and so that's what i want to dig into today because um true story <laughs> a couple of months ago i was sitting at um, a table with a lot of women and i don't really know how the conversation got started but um, someone started talking about their cycle and then you, you know, just like everybody was chiming in with, yes, uh, you know, my time of the month is terrible and I have this and this and this, and it just seemed like, you know, it was just this consensus of everybody must have this. Everybody must deal with all women, I should say, not everybody, obviously, but, um, all women must deal with this time of the month and it's just an, an accepted thing. And at least we don't feel like that the rest of the month, right? And so I just want to say that is extremely common, but it is not normal to have just debilitating PMS type symptoms. And this could range from a lot of, a lot of different symptoms. However, the most common I would say would be just like really heavy periods, clotting, cramping, breast tenderness, irritability, headaches, those types of things. And I mean, sometimes this is truly debilitating. Like women have to take days off work. They can't, they're really just incapacitated. And so, you know, for a day or two. And so if that's you, I just want to first off say, I'm sorry. And, and just the fact, and just give you hope to the fact that this really isn't normal. It is very common, but it's not normal. And so I just hopefully want to give you that hope first and foremost, but also just to give you some information around this and just ways that, you know, in steps that you might could just look at editing your diet or your lifestyle and just a little bit of a way to help with this. And again, this could definitely be like a multifaceted thing. However, I hope to give you some really simple and easy ways that you can help support your body in what it's trying to do um, as far as with your monthly cycle and just to run well in general. And so I've definitely found like way too many women put up with multiple symptoms around their cycle. Like each month, they muster up the strength and they just get through it. And so the truth is like your cycle can come and go and be relatively symptom free. If that seems like, how could that ever happen? I promise that it can happen. I know we all have, you know, or all we all are individual. However, I just want you to know like that is possible. In fact, it should be this way. We should, you know, really be thinking about how we can start caring for our monthly cycle. Like, I think sometimes we feel like we only need to focus on our cycle and like really maintaining good um, health for that if we're trying to get pregnant. And really it should be, we should be caring about these things, even if we're like, I'm not, I'm not in a season where I'm trying to actively get pregnant. Like I'm sort of past that season in my life and, and have a little bit, you know, older children now, but yet I still am tracking my cycle. I'm, I'm very well aware about how the, you know, the little nuances in my cycle can really tell a lot about how my body is needing support. And so the reason for that is like our body works as a whole together. And so if one system's off, it's going to impact other systems in our body. And so I want you to just consider looking at your menstrual cycle as like a little monthly report card that shows us the health of our body. It doesn't have to be this dreaded thing that we wish would go away and all of all of the, the bad thoughts that we have about it. Um, I get that you don't want to feel this way. However, it really does tell us a lot about our overall health. And we have the ability to really learn about our cycle, what it's saying and how we can help support our hormones and really overall health. Because this is the thing. And even in my online practice, like I kind of struggled to be honest for a while because I really felt like I needed to pick a niche like hormones or gut health or, you know, fill in the blank. But what I've realized and why I feel like I, I kept feeling like this is because it all works together. And so I choose not to focus on solely on one system. I get that 
these systems affect a lot of our body. However, I want to look at it from the other aspect of how can we support overall health so that it does bring our body back into balance as far as hormones. And it does bring our gut health back into balance and like these different systems that we tend to focus on. I'm very passionate about how it affects our overall health and how we can kind of more focus on that. And then hormones will eventually balance themselves out because that's kind of what happens whenever we do focus on these things that really affect more of our overall health. These things do come back into balance. So, um, you know, a lot of times these type of symptoms are caused by one or both of these things, and uh, they really do go together, excess estrogen and too little progesterone. So progesterone is really the feel good hormone. And so a lot of times we have too little of that. That's why we can experience just being really irritable around our cycle. And I get it, you know, it's kind of like a running joke, like stay away from her whenever it's, she's about to start, you know? And so I totally get it. I've definitely been there. I'm, I'm so not immune to these things. Um, so how do you know if you have extra estrogen? So there's, there's this little thing called basal body temperatures. And um, I do want you to let you know, I'm actually going to do a whole series on how we can know our cycles better, that sort of concept. So that's coming in the fall. So I won't dive a lot into just, you know, a couple of different things in this episode, like I will if I take it and give it its own episode, which I plan to do. So body temperatures, though, can tell us a lot. And so generally, people who have a temperature um, below 97.4, these temperatures are very exact because our body is just amazing. And it has these tiny fluctuations in temperatures, different times in our cycle. That's how you can actually do fertility awareness method and, you know, not do birth control and really see what your body's telling you as far as which phase that it's in and ovulation and all those things. That's kind of a lot of the way they do that is by temperatures. So you actually have this dip um, in temperatures whenever um, your body is producing this excess estrogen, and that's typically in the follicular phase. Um, and so these temperatures can really tell us a lot about what's going on. And if you do have, you know, sort of um, a miscommunication in your cycle, right? Um, these temperatures can tell us a lot in that. But again, that episode is going to when I do that in the fall, it's going to tell you a lot more about how this all works and how you can use that. But again, you can definitely Google these things as well. Um, but that is one way that you can tell. Um, other ways would be just specific symptoms. So breast tenderness, clotting, cramping, and heavy periods are typically associated with having excess estrogen. And so obviously our body is speaking to us in these ways. And so just knowing that and taking note is a way that we can definitely tell. Um, and so I wanted to give you some ways that you can help support estrogen balance and just Again, it's not that we want to demonize estrogen, but so many of us have excess estrogen. And so just looking to balance it out, um, getting adequate protein is so huge um, for a lot of different reasons, um, but it definitely can help us to really help our body get rid of the excess estrogen that we have. Also, B vitamins are really essential for detoxification of estrogen. Um, vitamin A really helps to protect our tissues, especially our breast tissues, from the excess estrogen effects um, that could cause things like cancer. Um, and that oftentimes these things are underlying for so long and the end result is something like breast cancer. And so just helping to support the balance of these two is really important. Um, vitamin E has been shown to help protect your body against those harmful effects of estrogen as well. It has kind of an anti-inflammatory protective effect on our tissues. Unsaturated oils have a strong estrogen promoting action. So these are things like polyunsaturated fats. A lot of times, really anytime you go out to eat and you eat something fried, it's in polyunsaturated oils and they're very unstabilized and un unstable, I guess I should say in your body and they can cause a lot of inflammation. And so this is why, you know, just taking note of those things and just trying to eat more at home, trying to avoid those oils are really going to help your hormonal levels. And so you can really help you support, help support the balance of estrogen and progesterone by avoiding these oils. 
raw carrots are actually something that can help prevent the reabsorption from estrogen, which is secreted into the intestines with the bile. And so eating a raw carrot kind of helps bind these things and get them out through the digestive system. So that's something that's really could be really easy to do that can have a big effect. So really a lot of these things that I mentioned um, help with blood sugar regulation. That is a really big thing, especially with protein that I mentioned. So blood sugar regulation begins in the pancreas, liver, and brain. And so all of these three organs are vital to help and really promote a healthy endocrine or hormone function. And so when our blood sugar drops too low, which happens a lot, um, there's blood sugar instability. It can cause really a lot of stress on the endocrine system, and that causes hormonal imbalance, of course, over time. And so simply by eating uh, really like a balance of protein, carbon, fat, you will help stabilize your blood sugar. And so you also just want to make sure that you're properly fueling your body in general with enough calories and enough like nutritional density to those calories. And so most women do really well eating around 2000 calories a day and having a balance of macros within that. And so that's really key to balance blood sugar because when it's really unstable like that, it it affects the endocrine system, which of course is where we where the hormones are at, right? And so blood sugar is 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 a really big key to this. Um, and really in that same vein, focusing on protein, super key because not only does it help blood sugar balance, but it also really helps to support those B vitamins, which are in sort of the chain in how our body, I guess I should maybe not chain, but just in the system how our body makes hormones. And so if we don't have enough B vitamins, it's almost like we don't have enough raw materials to make the hormones that we need. So that's really, really key. Um, and protein really makes it possible for your liver to detox its extra estrogen. So if you are not eating enough protein, then it's going to be really hard for your liver to detox excess estrogen, because that's the way that it is detoxed out of your system is through your liver. And so this excess estrogen, again, just can create eight more of these PMS symptoms. And so getting enough protein really matters, um, like really, really matters. So it's best to eat at least 80 milligrams of protein a day. Really more around 100 is what is ideal, which would typically equate 30 grams per meal. And then, of course, you're going to get some extra with snacks and, and things like that. So I would say 80 to 100 is a good range. And then the third thing that will really help in this in this whole situation of um, PMS type symptoms and balancing your hormones is to give your liver some love. I actually just did a challenge on this and just challenged the women that accepted the challenge to give their liver some extra love because it can really help with so many different things in our overall health, but definitely it's a huge player in hormonal health because this is the way, again, that our body has to go through getting rid of the excess hormones because our body uses hormones and then we have to get rid of them. They don't just like disappear. And so whenever our liver is sluggish and it's backed up for whatever reason, it can back up these hormones. And that's, again, estrogen is a big thing that does get backed up that causes these symptoms. And so really an easy way to love on your liver that I've already mentioned in a previous episode is to just wear a castor oil pack. Castor oil packs are so easy to implement into your daily routine and they're really going to be super supportive to, again, overall health, but specifically your, your hormones because they help support the liver. And so those are just some ideas to help you with um, so giving your hormones some love through these different ways. And I promise this will create a ripple effect that will go far beyond your hormones. However, these are just some really good ideas on how to support removing excess estrogen and also to, of course, increase that feel good hormone progesterone. And so I think to wrap this up, it's just important to consider how you're taking care of your body all month, because sometimes it's like we think we can just throw on some extra supports. Maybe like whenever, whenever we start feeling bad, we, we kind of want a quick fix right then. But I want to encourage you to think about how you can support your cycle month after month or your hormones month after month, all month long, not just a couple of days a month when you feel terrible. Um, you're kind of just 
you know, uh, sticking band-aids on things and just kind of, um, the, the fire's already there, right? You're trying to put out the fire, but yet it doesn't really work like that, especially with hormones. It takes time to balance hormones. And so eating enough protein, getting those nutrient dense protein sources, simply eating a raw carrot every day is they're just super simple ways that we can support our overall health. But really this going to, you're going to see big differences in your hormones over time. And again, give it time. Your body prioritizes things in a way of hierarchy. And so if you have just really kind of been running on fumes and you've just been go, 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 your body's not going to prioritize hormonal balance. So it's going to take some time to slow down and to do some of these things to support your body. And then over the next few months, I really feel confident that you're going to see a big difference in your cycle. And remember, it's very common to have bad PMS, but it's not normal. So there is hope. Um, let me know what your thoughts are on this. If you have a specific question about something I said, I'm more than happy to try to help if I can. So make sure to continue the conversation and whatever platform is best for you. Email or Instagram are the typical ways people reach out, but happy to continue this conversation and help in any way that I can. And I'll see you guys on the next episode.